Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tsukho if you are new here and if you're an oldie but a goodie, hey girl, hey. Today's video has a very, very special place in my heart and I'm dedicating it to every single new natural in the world. This is for you. Now I know that it's a bit weird that I've taken so long to actually put out a video like this on my channel especially because one of my niches is primarily focused on natural hair care and more specifically 4C natural hair. If you're new to my channel and you don't know the specs of my hair I am a 4C kinky coily sister and I've got low porosity hair and very very dense thick hair. Hair. The reason why it's taken me so long to put a video like this out is because I really wanted to explore and actually get a proper regimen together that removed the fuss and the fluff and the marketing out of natural hair care. This year my goal on my channel is to literally simplify natural hair care. I want to make it as unintimidating as possible. I am a very lazy natural so I am absolutely obsessed with protective hairstyles. If you want to know how to put on a frontal wig and you're new to being natural, I got you. If you want to know how to install passion twists, I got you. If you want to know how to do faux locks, I got you. So this is going to be a channel that you come and I want you to feel at home. I want you to feel comfortable to make mistakes, comfortable to do the unconventional, the taboo things. I want to create that space for you to also be able to ask me those questions that other naturals or other natural hair influencers would be like, what are you doing? I'm referring to questions around using hair food, Vaseline, sunlight, relaxer on your hair. Feel free to ask me those kinds of questions because I wish I had someone that I trusted to ask these questions. Also, if you don't know, I've been on my natural hair journey since 2012. So as a new natural, I just want to equip you with all of the new and old school things that I have stuck with since I started my journey. On my tray, <laughs> let me show you guys my tray. Uh, you probably would have seen it on the thumbnail. On my tray, I've got nine products. Nine products that I think every new natural must have and actually even new existing naturals. I think that we have overcomplicated natural hair routines and regimens. We've put too many rules. Um, we force people to do certain things. Also, I think even worse, there is no evidence-based outcome for why people must have certain routines or follow certain steps. So I'm not sure to tell you how your routine must look, but I'm here to tell you what thinking process you must go through when you are acquiring the products and the tools that you need for your natural hair journey. And I hope this is helpful, not just for people who are new to natural hair care, but also people who have been natural for a very long time. So the way that I like to build my regimens or the way that I like to purchase products is, I sit down and I actually analyze my hair and I think about what my hair actually needs. So I basically build it from that perspective, from a needs basis, as opposed to what looks pretty or what looks interesting in the market. So the first thing that I think every natural should have is a water bottle. This is a water bottle that I've had for, I can't even tell you how many years and it still works. You can put your water in here, you can put your water and oils in here, you can put your leave-in conditioner diluted in here. Whatever you want to do, I think any new natural needs this because this is the number one step of maintaining natural hair. Natural hair is very sensitive, contrary to what you may think. You may feel like my hair is hard, it resists combs, it breaks combs, but in all that, it's got kinks and coils and tangles that make us easily susceptible to breakage. So when we add moisture to our routine or when we leave with moisture in our routine it actually makes natural hair care that much easier and better and healthier for your hair and then when you think about any good natural hair regimen it needs yes yes shampoo shampoo is a one product that I use the least of this is the sheer moisture shampoo this is for low porosity it's the baobab and tea tree oils low porosity protein free shampoo if you can get your hands on this shampoo I would highly recommend that you do if you do have low per hair um, it's, I've, I've had this for quite a while. I hope it's not expired because I'm not going to throw it away. <laughs> it's so hard to get your hands on it, but if you do guys, please, please get it. The thing that I love about the shampoo is it doesn't strip your hair, but it does cleanse. It does give you a deep cleanse. And I think for a person like me who doesn't shampoo their hair with every single wash day, whenever I do, you do need something that is effective because obviously without washing all the time, you would have accumulated some sort of product buildup. And I find that this hair is gentle yet very, very effective. It's got that tea tree in it, which also strips and clarifies the scalp, making sure that your scalp is balanced and healthy. So yeah, I absolutely love this. I would say out of all the products that I'm going to show you guys today, this is probably going to be the most expensive one, but it's 
definitely want to accumulate and want to have in your collection. The next thing that you need to do is bring back all that moisture into the hair and repair the hair shaft. And what I would highly recommend is getting a conditioner. I've got a Native Child product review where I talk about this very product. This, I think, is literally the standout product in my collection that I have on my tray of all the things I use. And I have a lot of natural hair, a lot of natural hair products, but this I will never be without. For starters, it is a local brand. So if you live in South Africa, you're looking for local companies, I really highly recommend Native, Native Child as a hair company. If you are stuck and trying to figure out, okay, how do I build my collection of products? I would highly recommend that you start with them. They really know how to formulate products, their products are effective, they work, and guess what? They are affordable, but also they are widely accessible. They are in pick and pay, you can get them in clicks, you can also get them on their website, and they deliver really, really quickly. I don't know what else I should say to you to convince you to get some Native Child products, and no, I'm not sponsored by Native Child, but I'm just blown away by the quality of their products and the effectiveness of their products at the price points that they are offering them at. So this was a discovery that I made in 2020, hands down my best hair product for 2020 or hair product discovery for 2020 it is a co-wash it is a deep conditioner and it is also a conditioner so depending on how long you leave it will determine obviously how effective it is in your hair you can use it as a co-wash because also it has ingredients and i have this all in my video but it has ingredients that prove that it actually has the capability of moisturizing your hair of hydrating your hair as well as cleansing it so i think it's a fantastic product so if you're looking for something and you know want to spend money buying a hair mask buying a deep conditioner buying a proper conditioner get this i also think that this can also be diluted in your water bottle to make a leave-in conditioner that you can spray on your hair so there's a lot of uses out of this product and i really like it the next thing that we're aiming to do depending on whether you're low porosity high porosity or medium porosity i'm low porosity also guys just as a side note if you are curious about porosity i know that there's so much information and resources out there i don't want to sound like a broken record and like release the same kind of content as what you could find on other people's channels but if you do want to hear my perspective on hair porosity let me know and i will craft a video on hair porosity so that you guys can get a bit more familiar with what hair porosity is and what it means to you and your regimen and how you take care of your hair anyway let's get back to it so now your hair's hydrated you've jumped out of the shower and the next step is we need to seal in the moisture this is how we make sure that our hair stays healthy that it grows and that it's happy and that you are happy as a person who's maintaining the hair and i believe that irrespective of what your porosity level is you definitely need to do the loc method once you have washed and conditioned your hair or just conditioned your hair because this is how you're going to retain and seal your moisture. Depending on your hair type, I'm gonna talk for myself because this is the only hair I have, and this is the only hair I can personally master, but if you have hair that is similar to mine, I would recommend using really thick and heavy oils. My really favorite one that I've used since I became natural in 2012 is Jamaican Black Castor Oil. This very brand is what I actually started out using. I find that this is very, very effective for your edges, for making your hair just feel really nourished and moisturized and for sealing. It is a thick um, oil, so I don't think it's suitable for every single hair type. Some people use it as um, an oil treat, a hot oil treatment. I like to keep it in my hair. I like to base my scalp with it because my hair really likes it. So if you're curious about Jamaican black castor oil, then I would recommend that you go and grab yourself a bottle. You don't need to get this exact one. This is the one that I use and I reach for whenever I go to this came. So once we've applied an oil, obviously we've got the liquid because we've just washed our hair. People use, some people use leave-in conditioners, I am some people, but in all honesty, I don't have a leave-in conditioner in my um, things that you need. Basically because I, I think that if you are cash strapped or if you had to eliminate one product, for me it would be the leave-in conditioner that I eliminate. Um, because I've used multiple leave-in conditioners that were not effective, but because of the um, sealants that I use, the butters that I use, my hair's been able to retain moisture, which makes me wonder, like, do I actually need a leave-in conditioner? So for this, I have left it out. However, if you are looking to get a leave-in conditioner and you like leave-in conditioners, you can definitely get one. So after we apply the oil, the next thing that I like to go in with is butter. I've got three different butters here. I've got some shea butter. I've got like a what is the texture of this it's like a cream it's like a buttercream this one is from afro botanics it's my african triple butter i feel like a broken record telling you guys about this because i tell you guys about it all the time and then i've got this one 
by Nylotica. This is their deep moisture butter. Very impressed with this product. Actually, this finished and I was like, it finished and I couldn't get the same size in store. And that's what made me go back to African triple butter. But I've been using these for around right about the same time and I've had multiple purchases of both. So these are staples, these are staples in my hair routine. And the one product that I mentioned that I've added, which is new to my regimen is the Native Child Shear Whipped Butter. You guys can see, I was super impressed with Native Child. <laughs> and this, now that I've used it on my hair, I will never not use it. I found that now that I've added shea butter over and above these butters, my hair retains moisture for longer and it's actually softer for longer. So I found a very big difference in using a butter and a shea butter. Um, I don't know if I'm un overdoing it, but I, as I mentioned, create my regimens or build my hair routines from what my hair needs. It, my, my hair routines are very much hair led or hair need led and my hair says it wants these. so. I now use these for my natural hair. And then we're gonna to go to the tools, guys. There are only two tools that I think you need as a new natural, and that is basically this. I don't even know what you call this. Like an edge tamer and a detangling brush. Before I get to the edge tamer, I wanna talk about the detangling brush. When I became natural, I transitioned to natural. I didn't big chop. Um, I big chopped recently in 20, which year was it? 2019, that's when I did a big chop. And if you're curious to see my Big Chop video, I will also tag it so that you guys can check it out. But there is a wealth of information, guys, in my natural hair um, playlist. So if you guys have time and you're curious about my natural hair journey and my natural hair philosophy, then I would highly recommend that you actually take some time and watch that playlist. Trust me, it will not be a waste of time for you. I really think that you're going to find them very valuable. But anyway, as I was still saying, when I started out, I didn't, I think it detangled because I had two different textures and I wanted to prevent breakage. But the one thing I must say is, big chopping for me personally was the best way to go natural again. Um, I think this whole thing of holding onto your hair texture and your hair length, it's a psychological thing. And I know when you have long hair, thinking about starting out when you have short hair, it's not for everyone and no one is judging you. Like literally, it's a safe space. If you feel like you still want your long hair and you want to go ahead and manipulate your hair until you feel comfortable to chop, it's completely up to you. I actually have videos in my natural hair playlist where you can see my hair length and you can see my two textures and how I manipulated them and how I worked with them. It is a lot of work though, I must say guys. And having got transitioned and also big chopped, I will say I am for big chopping. I get the thing about not wanting to let go of your length. Don't feel judged and don't feel rushed. Do it at your own time. Anyway, I digress. I was saying all of that to basically say this. When I big chopped, I got myself, actually no, this was gifted to me through a PR job, this um, Evolve detangling brush. and. Honestly, whether or not it was gifted, I would still go out and buy it. If this broke tomorrow, I am going and I'm buying this. Um, it has been such a joy. It makes detangling process so much faster. And also, when you detangle your hair, guys, with a comb, your hair, it, your hair actually gets softer. So I'd highly recommend that you detangle. It might be a little bit sore when you start, but once you get all those knots and tangles out and you maintain it regularly, you'll see it's going to be such a boost to maintain your hair and as i mentioned this edge tamer i think this and the leave-in conditioner are two of those products where you can keep it in or you can take it out depending on your preference you can use a toothbrush if i'm being honest but the thing that i like about this edge tamer is it's got three wow okay it's got three uses um this was also given to me in a pr drop but i think you can get both of these from Discam. They are both from the same company, Evolve, but I have seen these at Discam. This you can use to brush your edges with. I'm not one to like lay my edges. I feel like it's too much admin, so I normally just like brush them away. But if I'm feeling fancy on the day, I will lay my edges with this. I like it because it also has this side, this fine comb side that you can use to actually like shape your hair, bring it down, and it actually looks so nice with the lines that this creates. This also rat tail comb, you can use this to um, create lines. <laughs> it's great for scratching your hair as well <laughs> didn't know this but yeah you can use it to scratch your scalp as well and yeah i think very versatile and very great tool i'm all for multi-purpose products guys because natural hair products are expensive and if you can use one thing for multiple things 
it's a yay for me. The next thing guys in protecting your hair that I think every natural person needs is some sort of hair protection. I use the satin bonnet, this very, very satin, is it satin? Yeah, it is satin bonnet. I use a satin bonnet, this very, very famous satin bonnet that I always go live with. <laughs> or on my stories on Instagram with. This is what you see on my head all the time. I've been using this for more than a year now and this elastic part has never gotten loose. I can use it when I've got braids. I can use it when I have a wig on. It's really snug, it's quite, quite snug. And the material on the inside is satin so it won't cause friction with your hair. I also actually have satin pillowcases but um, I, don't, I don't really sleep on these with my head maybe when i'm like resting on my bed or i'm reading a book then i will lie on the pillowcase but i usually am always wearing a bonnet i wear a bonnet indoors 80 percent of the time if i'm lying on the couch watching tv even with this hairstyle i'll wear a bonnet i think it's just out of habit but what i found is when you cover your hair your hair doesn't get snagged it doesn't get impacted by the friction of your surroundings and as a result you can retain length and grow your hair faster so that's just a quick tip about wearing a bonnet all the time. It may be boring, but your hair will thank you for it. Hey guys, we've reached the end of the video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I think that this was a very useful video for, for me, and I hope it was for you as well. If you have any other questions, guys, you can leave them in the comment section down below, and you meet me on the Instagram streets. Drop me a DM, and let's get chatting there. Until next time, guys. Ciao for now.